Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the yeah last review video of the club season in many ways um, although I am still planning but this has to come after the international break I'm planning to summarize the eight league seasons that I'm covering uh, in sh shortish videos let's see how this will work out because shortish videos and me usually doesn't happen. In any case, what I want to summarize here are all the playoff action and a little bit promotion action that we saw over the past two weeks to kind of have it in one video. Now, uh, this video is more or less in two parts. There are three leagues where um, in all the promotion playoffs there is no team from the first league involved. That is, of course, the big leagues with like England, Italy and Spain. So I will talk to those first because I don't really have graphics for them uh, because yeah, I don't have those leaks uh, that ready in many ways. So yeah, uh, but I want to talk about them because uh, there have been quite some interesting uh, things happening there. And then we of course have to talk about all the other playoff action, be it Germany, which has been long decided. I'm wearing Hertha who managed by a threat to stay in, in the league. Um, which you know is one of the four jerseys of teams that are uh, of teams that were involved in such playoffs that I actually have. So in that sense, I was not unhappy that Hertha was in there. Although I really want to have Hamburg in there because I because I think they are such a traditional superpower in Germany that deserve to be in the first league. And uh, the traditional powers making it back or barely making it back there is a definite threat on uh, that one in this video as well so just <laughs> stay <laughs> stay tuned for that one so we will first start uh, as I said in uh, in uh, the three big leagues where there is only promotion playoffs from the second league up and then we'll go to uh, the other five uh, as I said George uh, Joseph was my vid my video or my collector is not made for such videos uh, that's why I decided to put up behind me the eight champions of the leagues that I'm covering and here are five of the cup winners only PSV didn't make it uh, the other two we had only two double winners this season which are of course Porto and Salzburg over there uh, which I found very interesting uh, as well I was thinking I should actually start a loan service for jerseys, you know, where uh, I need a jersey for a certain video, let's loan it and then I send it back. That would be an interesting uh, thought, uh, definitely. I would say I'm going to start uh, with the um, championship playoffs in England. We already know that in England we have um, Fulham back and we have Bournemouth back. So it was then the playoffs and the playoff final was between Huddersfield and Nottingham Forest and uh, already Nottingham against Sheffield was a pretty big uh, match of and Huddersfield Luton uh, seemed to be a little bit and 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 climactic because they were the bigger the, the bigger name teams were def definitely other part and so was the final I think unless you were a Huddersfield fan or you really don't like Nottingham Forest uh, you were for Nottingham Forest in this one as was I I really actually and you know the whole story with Steve Cooper taking him over in last place and then leading him all the way for a promotion where they almost could have made it without the playoffs um, was a pretty big story and as I said Nottingham Forest is one of those traditional powers in English football that actually do very much belong up there however I actually watched that game and I have to say the longer the game went the more I felt for Huddersfield and in the end I actually felt a little bit sad that Hutt Huddersfield didn't make it. Uh, first off the go-ahead call it was a, a horrid game. <laughs> it has to be Great weather horrible game. It was decided by an own goal by Colville and by refereeing decisions in the second half I think Huddersfield should have had at least one if not two penalties. Uh, and referee Moss didn't give them in the first place and VAR didn't help him at all. Uh, and Huddersfield can feel very much aggrieved, but I think in both cases you have to do, you have to point to the spot. I I really don't understand why. So Huddersfield really can feel hard done by, yes, it's great to have Nottingham Forest back, but honestly, nah, this didn't feel right in many, many ways. Um, another one that where I actually, you know, I, I was of two minds. Uh, so if, if, if you go now to Serie B, uh, to Italy, uh, we already knew that um, 
We had um, Cremonese was the second place team uh, that was up. And then uh, the first place team, of course, was uh, Lecce. So we have two teams or RSI and I had this huge playoff system where uh, Egg actually the two best team. Last year it was Egg actually two lower teams with Ven Ven Venezia and Cittadella make it, but this time was Pisa and Monza. With uh, Pisa actually uh, being the higher ranked one, uh, just by gold, the first balls line, line of 67, 77 points. But that's why Pisa had Egg actually the home field advantage in the, in the playoff. And of course, Monza, um, very much supported by uh, Silvio Berlusconi. Remember that guy? Yes. Um, and Ad Adriano Galliani. So it's kind of a Milan B. I was really, really, really of two minds. Do I want Monza up or not? Because um, how will they play against Milan? Will it be an easy six points? Because Bernard Bel Berlusconi uh, demands that they give Milan the points. Or will they actually, because uh, Bernard Berlusconi is not happy that he lost Milan, blah, blah, blah. What happened the other way? I don't know. And given that Pisa Stadium is right next to the Leaning Tower, that would have been awesome too. And I think they have been uh, up there. And you know, a, a few more teams from... We have already a few Lombard teams in there. For, uh, three, yeah. When we had a few from Tus, 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 but Pisa, I think it would have added a little bit to the derbies there. In any case, um, the first leg was an uh, all Monza affair where only Pisa with a stoppage time goal kept, kept, kept the 2 1 at the end. Uh, the return leg yesterday in the evening, and I l regret not watching it. Uh, I regret a few games not watching, or I was not able to watch. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess there was really real time. Beer watched the Hockey World Cup final. Uh, also, an absolute amazing game uh, where Finland won in overtime after the, you thought they already had won. And Canada pulled it back in the last two minutes. Was also a But Pisa had a very quick 2 0 lead, so they would have been being promoted. However, Monza uh, had it packed back uh, by the 79th minute to 2 2 2. So in the 20th, they made it 2 1, then it was 2 2. Then uh, Mastino in the 90th minute gave Pisa the um, uh, 3 2 lead, which meant it goes into overtime. But in overtime, uh, Monza scored two goals through Maroni and Gitkia, who had actually already scored two and I think one in the first leg. Uh, then having a, 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 a red cup of a player or not on pitch, I see. Uh, and so in the end, it is Monza who make it up in, into Serie A. And then if you like drama, I think the last match day of um, the um, Segunda DVD Division, La Liga Dos, uh, was also nothing for uh, weak nerves. I have another team. I think the team that's luck is, of course, Ra Valladolid. And I'm very happy that I will have that jersey back on the wall. They make it, but literally in the last second. They needed um, Almeria to lose in order to overtake him. Almeria could have already clinched their spot uh, last week, which they didn't. And also they needed um, Eibar to lose. One of the old doors too. Uh, Valladolid get a 3-0 over Huesca, securing the third spot. 2-2 um, two, two between Leganes and Almeria. I think uh, Le Leganes was were twice in, 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 in the lead, but that would have not been enough for uh, Vi 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 Vi. And then Alcorcon uh, was playing against Eibar. Eibar were the first place team ahead of it. And Eibar looked really, for the longest time, absolutely secure in um, uh, going up. However, in stoppage time, Alcorcon, the last placed team the last place team uh sent a bar into third spot i'm not 100 if the nil nil wouldn't have already been enough but i have a feeling that Valladolid would not have overtaken uh a bar as well uh as far as i can uh, maybe they would have i i i don't know about the head to head and, and so on in, 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 anyway that last place beats first place and that's why Valladolid is up that's a pretty big a uh, big story and pretty much dra dramatic. Uh, the top three teams, 81, 81, 80 points. So it could have been finishing three points with eight, three teams with 81 points at, at, at the end. Would, would have been quite exciting uh, as well. And then we have now the promotion players. This will be played and I don't know uh, yet. It will be Tenerife against Las Palmas, a can uh, Canary uh, duel and a Girona against Eibar. Uh, and then the winner will play for the last promotion spot into the Premier Division. Okay. That's done with all the second league action. Let's go uh, relegation playoffs in Germany. I already talked a little bit about the one 
the, the first one where Reis gave Heiss a foul or Hamburg the win in, in Berlin with a cross that just erred into goal. Uh, in a game that I think Hertha was way too nervous and Hamburg actually controlled a little bit more. Come the second leg, uh, it was an early goal uh, by Boyata that Eck actually leveled things, things up really quickly for Hertha. And then Hertha really showed that they are a first league team and Hamburg could not cope with that DFD difference. The winner came from a Plattenhardt free kick from far out, similar to the goal that Hamburg scored in Berlin. It errs in and uh, Berlin stay in the league. It is a very similar story to what happened between Köln and Kiel last year around these three times between Hamburg and Hertha. So H and H, K and K, very in interesting stuff. Again, it was not a great game. However, I absolutely loved both both games full with fans. Those were two massive clubs. And it would have been sad for either one to not make it. And I really hope that Hamburg get now their SHIT together to make it up into, into, in, into the first league. Moving on to Austria. Yes, my last was involved also in the playoff. However, they didn't show up for about 60 minutes, especially in the first half. I mean, there was absolutely no... Uh, no intensity from their part, which is so not last game. Vrioni and then especially Sabitzer just before for, for stoppage time of the first half made it 2 0 for Tirol, really putting the way for uh, paving the way um, going into the um, uh, Euro uh, Conference League uh, playoff final. It's a long way. The goal by Sabitzer hurt double because not only was it a 2 2 0, but Sabitzer is a last player on loan. So, yeah, did hurt to be too, to be honest. However, they get a penalty, and um, I think the last 15 minutes, Lask was really, really pressing, playing uh, in a completely new jersey as well. Um, <laughs> which, yeah, whatever. Uh, they were really pressing and uh, then had some, some chances, but it was always the last pass that was missing, only a penalty. That, 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 that was that, and then Tyrol have no. I was not unhappy because I don't think we would have done any anything against Rapid, and I didn't want to give Rapid the, uh, the honors of you know uh, making it to the calf conference league by beating uh, us. Two early goals in Tyrol, uh, 10th and 13th, settled the game. Vrioni pulls one back, but then you know, with a red card and, and so on, it never was gonna work for Tyrol uh, in, 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 in any way. And then Real Rapid plays it home in an almost empty stadium with an early goal by Ljubicic and then um, a late one by Binda. Rapid go in the conference uh, league playoffs, but it was not a good season for them. Moving over to the eternal enemy, France. <laughs> Yeah, that's history for you. No, I, I personally don't see, see Frost as an enemy and, and, and anymore. If I have ta I, if I would have made this video 150 years or 200, 100 years ago, of course, I would have been speaking differently. Um, it, we already knew that it was Osair who were in the playoffs against Saint Saint-Saint-Saint-Saint. And it was really, really tight playoffs with a very uh, similar picture in both of them, where always the away team took the lead. Um, and then uh, the home team could equalize. So uh, in the first leg, it was Yusuf that gave saint Etienne a 1 0 lead. And then uh, it was an 86th equalizer by Perrin. However, um, completely the other way around. Saki gives the heads, it heads Osser in the lead at saint Etienne. Then they have a big chance to make it 2. Uh, it does not happen. And then Kamara equalizes um, in the uh, self 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 sixth. Uh, then so they also have a chance to kind of uh, decide the a tie for them. However, it goes to overtime and it goes to penalties where Saint Etienne missed the first one and then Osser move on and then all hell literally breaks loose with the um, with the ultras of Saint Etienne who already caused quite a example throwing flares on, on to the pitch players, pitch invasion. This was a non-happy pitch invasion. And it just added to the feeling. We already saw the chaos at the Champions League final. And I more and more get to the uh, conclusion it was a failure of the organizers in Paris. And here it was a complete failure uh, as well. It was ugly scenes uh, nonetheless. And it's also ugly that the traditional club, Le Saint-Saint-Saint-Saint-Saint-Saint, um, have to go down into Ligue 2. In many ways. Now, to the absolute playoff madness, we have to go to the Netherlands. Um, already the playoff semifinals for the U uh, again for the Conference League. 
were not for the faint heart. They were full of goals. I mean, you see the first legs. We talked, we talked about it in, in, in the last time where Herrenveen and AZ, uh, Herrenveen beat AZ 3-2 and Utrecht beat Vitesse 3-1. However, it turns around then. AZ beat Herrenveen 2-0 and Vitesse in overtime turned all those around. So it's the two seeded teams that play in the final where Vitesse with a, a very late winner at home um, in the 86 through a Panda beat AZ and go into the playoff final and are completely outclassed. It was 3-0 at the half, it's 6-1 at, at the end, it was 5-1 before Vitesse even made their goal. Um, Vitesse had a decent European season, they for a time really seemed to be in there that they might actually go into fourth, fifth spot or whatever and then it completely broke off the end of the, of the season for Vitesse was a nose dive and it ends in infamy in a way. That was maybe not as dramatic, but the full drama came in the promotion playoffs. I already said that we had Heracles eliminated by Excelsior uh, and they played against Den Haag. Now, full disclosure, I actually was a little bit rooting for Den Haag because I saw online a Den Haag jersey and I said, I'm going to buy this one uh, for a decent price. You know, I want to expand the Dutch collection. And I said, I'm not going to buy this one, but for that, then Haag needs to make it to um, the uh, Eredivisie because it would, it would be really nice to add a little bit uh, green and uh, yellow. First leg, 1-1. One, one. Second leg, I mean, what a crazy game that must have been. If you were Den Haag fan, you went literally from heaven to hell to heaven and then completely in uh, uh, purgatory, heaven and then completely into hell. So that's how I heard it. First of all, Excelsior missed a penalty in the third, third minute and just a little bit later, then Haag scored twice uh, to give uh, themselves a 2-0 two, two lead and just after half they make it 3-0. They have a three goal lead. Sounds familiar to someone like me. Uh, and look, set for for the other divisia however excelsior doesn't give up and uh in the 79th uh make it 3-1 83rd 3-2 stoppage time 3-3 meanwhile both teams had players uh sent off uh before uh the goals for excelsior um uh, player for the Haag came came uh, came off and then uh just before the e if a serious ball foul play sent them out in overtime then Haag take again the lead in the 97th minute. And again, they concede an equalizer in the 108th. And then a mega shootout. You see nine penalties per team. And both of them missed their third. Uh, it was with Excelsior starting. And then very, very the last penalty is missed. And it is Excelsior making up. We have three Rotterdam teams in uh, the Eredivisie next year. That's interesting, isn't it? Okay, uh, this was the highest drama. I think the only one that's left now is Portugal, where we also have Mora Ranch going down. Uh, they lose the first game to Chavez uh, and they win only 1-0, so it's not enough. And we have uh, Chavez with three promoted teams in Portugal, which also is uh, quite interesting, I would say. So yeah, this is basically ends a little bit the club season now. We go into the in 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 international mode. I have tons of unpacking videos uh, lined up for you. So pro probably you'll get one uh, tomorrow or on Wednesday. I have to see how it will work out. Pro, uh, pro, 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 probably want one, one tomorrow on Wednesday. I give you a preview of the international games with Nations League with World Cup qualifiers. There's so much happening. We will talk about it all. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And yes, I'm looking forward to next season, but maybe there will be some changes on my channel of what and how I will cover uh, different leagues, but uh, that's all to be seen. Up until then, all the best and goodbye. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated on all the things that are rotating in my soccer universe. And with that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful day.